Everyone's probably telling you to do over 100 mixed timed UWorld questions a day. After all, studies show that the highest scoring students do many more questions on average. But if it were really that simple, wouldn't everyone just do 100 questions a day and automatically score 260s? Let me show you the exact UWorld settings, realistic expectations, and milestones you need to make scoring in the 250s, 260s, or even 270s virtually inevitable, even if your score is below passing to start. Let's talk some evidence. It's absolutely true that people who score the highest on their board exams tend to do lots of questions, usually mixed in time. Study after study confirms this. And from an educational standpoint, this makes perfect sense. Active learning beats passive learning, and the testing effect is one of the strongest proven ways to learn. But here's what these studies don't tell you. What were these students' starting scores? When I started studying for step one, my first practice score was in the 240s, which was already in the 75th percentile. Of course, doing timed and mixed blocks worked for me. I already had a strong knowledge base. But think about this. There are students who are literally scoring 100 points lower than that, right? Like if you're scoring 40%, right? If you're in or 30% on your test, when people tell us that we should only do 100 questions a day and like that's magically gonna fix everything, are we really suggesting that this strategy should work for every single person? That somehow copying the strategies of someone who scored in the top 0.1% like me, what I did in my dedicated studying would magically boost everyone's score to the same level? Of course not, right? That doesn't make any sense. So if blindly following what top score is do doesn't work, what does? What if you're that first year medical student who's still building their foundation? What if you barely pass your classes and have forgotten a lot of material? Would doing 100 random timed questions daily make everything click? No, you need a different approach. You need to start where you are, not where someone else finished. What I'm going to show you next is exactly where to start at every level, from the very basics to the advanced studiers. We'll break down how to use UWorld effectively no matter where you're starting from and how to progress through each stage of mastery. So for phase one, we're just gonna keep it simple. Start with five question blocks. I know this doesn't seem like a lot. I'll explain more why that makes sense in a bit. You wanna focus on just one topic. For example, we tend to start with coronary artery disease. So here's an example of what this might look like. Um, I, you know, personally, I like to start with tutor mode in the beginning. This is for step two, but it would look the same thing for step one in terms of choosing what subjects. So you would choose all subjects. Um, and then when you go to systems, you are going to hit this plus sign right here. And so you might start with something like coronary heart disease or, you know, like one of the, one of the sections that has more questions in it. Initially, I, I recommend keeping this untimed because again, you're learning the process of how to read questions. You're gonna have to learn the process of how to learn things in the USMLE relevant way. Your target should be about 20 to 30 questions per day. You should be aiming to get 80% in your chosen topic. The reason why starting with large mixed time blocks don't work for a lot of people, especially in the beginning, is, is that it'll take you months to see if your studying is actually working, right? It's sort of like if you hit a tennis ball and then you had to wait months to see where it landed, you wouldn't have the kind of feedback necessary to know how to adjust your studying to see what you could make better. If you start with a relatively simple subtopic, like say coronary artery disease, then you can learn that topic relatively quickly. Even after learning a topic, you'll still get a lot of questions wrong, often because you'll have a hard time with interpreting questions, right? You're gonna have to solve problems of how are you reading questions? And do you understand what the question's really asking you? And can you put all of the information together in the vignette? Knowing the knowledge is a necessary but not sufficient step for getting getting a lot of questions correct on your exam. By limiting yourself to a smaller topic, it'll make it much more obvious to you what sorts of gaps you still have. Usually what we recommend is to get 80% on 10 consecutive unused questions. A big enough sample to know that you know the topic well enough, right? Not perfectly, but well enough that you can move on. Personally, I like 80% as a target for step one or for step two. For step one, obviously the goal is to pass. If you wanna score at like 60% and you start at 50%, you don't have to study every single topic and get it to 80% in order to get your overall score to 65%. Let's say that you wanted to get your score to 60% for step one before you wanted to take your test. If you started at 40% and you only got 50% of the material to 80%, your average score would be 60%. If you target an 80% on everything that you know, as we'll talk about later, your success will be virtually inevitable because in order to score really high, all you have to do is just keep learning more things. As you probably realized, the critical thing is to make sure that you can get it to 80% in the first place. This is where most people fall off, is, is that they tend to rush through this and they worry that they're moving too slowly and that they're not covering enough material quickly. What they have yet to realize is that by covering material quickly and just having a superficial understanding of it, it will mean that they're most likely going to have to go back and relearn the material later, which is actually the biggest time killer. Once you've gotten 80% on untimed blocks of 10 consecutive unused questions, the next step is to add the 
element of time. At this stage, I still recommend that you do five question blocks. The reason being that if you do a 10 question block, you're gonna blow through the questions much faster. All you're trying to do really in the beginning is to identify things that you don't know, and then use something like first aid as a target for how to master that thing more in depth. Be sure to check out our other videos on how to use first aid more effectively to master topics as opposed to just memorize them. But for phase two, you're gonna still do five question blocks, but you're gonna change two things. One, you're gonna add time. And two, you wanna increase the number of questions that you're doing per day. The ultimate goal is still that we wanna get 80% on 40 question mixed timed blocks, but we're doing this in a graded way. If you want advice on how to read questions more efficiently, be sure to let us know in the comments and like and subscribe this video so that you can be notified when we come out with more content. Phase three is where we move beyond subtopics to a broader system. So by this point, you should have mastered at least three to four to five subtopics already. Subtopics like coronary artery disease, subtopics like heart failure, subtopics like arrhythmias. Once you can get your score to 80% reliably on the things that you're studying, because you're able to master that topic broadly, then you should turn your attention to the entire system that it came from. If we've been learning subtopics from cardiovascular, then we would want to do all questions from cardiovascular. Next, I'm going to explain how to study from an entire system as opposed to just one of the subtopics. And for this, it's pretty simple. You just go down and you find the system and then you select the entire system and then you would make your block. If you've been mastering the subtopics well, it should be relatively straightforward for you to expand this to the entire system. Growing more comfortable with using time blocks and you should be growing more comfortable with using resources like first aid and master the boards. In terms of target metrics for system specific blocks, I recommend doing 10 to 20 questions per block and 40 to 50 questions per day. The reason why this works as a next step is, is that you now want to do two things. One, you want to remove the unfair advantage of having a subtopic focus, right? If I'm studying something from coronary artery disease, then I'll naturally be able to eliminate other answer choices that don't deal with that particular topic as I'm doing those questions. The other thing is, is that you're able to cast a much wider net. Ideally, you choose the topics that have the most questions in that system, since those are the topics that are going to be overrepresented on your exam. However, there's a lot of smaller topics as well. And for those, you still need to learn them, especially if you want to get a really high score. Cover all of those topics. It's more efficient to do this by just covering the entire system as opposed to by a subtopic by subtopic approach. The other thing at this stage that you should be feeling is more motivation. One of the greatest motivators is to know that what you're doing is working. Everything that you studied, you could see yourself getting 80% on that thing. Like, do you think that you would be more motivated? Of course you would. Now contrast that with what most people do when they prematurely do timed mixed blocks. Their scores maybe suck in like the 40 or 50 or 60% range. They've often studied for weeks or months without seeing any consistent improvement. Because of this, every single time they think about doing New World, they're going to be really demotivated. In contrast, when you see short-term results, it's going to to feel more exciting. And the more motivated you'll be, the more work you'll do. And the more work you'll do, the better your scores will be. And it becomes a virtuous cycle. The other thing that you'll probably be seeing at this stage is that you're learning things faster. And so you're going to be able to cover more material. Not only will this happen because you'll be more motivated, but it will also happen because the more that you know, the easier it is to learn new things. One of the reasons that we start with fewer questions per day in the beginning is, is because it takes more time to learn things the first time. Once you spend time learning some of the core concepts of that given system, it will go that much faster for you to learn new things. Phase four is the natural progression after you've mastered one system. At this point, ideally you would have mastered maybe two individual systems by themselves. So maybe you mastered cardiology and then maybe you did GI. Again, remember that these systems can be adapted. So for example, if you're in classes and you're studying neurology, then I would you know, do neurology questions. You don't have to study them in the order that I'm saying here, they can be adapted. If you're starting, however, from dedicated studying for step one or step two, or if you're starting from scratch, I typically recommend starting with cardiology since it's a topic that doesn't require you to know a lot of other things for you to master it. But once you've mastered a couple systems, now you should be ready to mix systems together. The way to do this is to take the two systems that you've already mastered and add on one new system that you're learning. If you've mastered cardio and GI and gotten each of those to 80%, 10 or 20 consecutive questions, then you'd wanna add renal to that mix. This is again, increasing the challenge level, right? Now you no longer have the advantage of 
having system specific advantages where I know it's a cardiology question. And so I know that anything that's not, that doesn't have to do with cardiology, I can just eliminate from the answer choices. It also is going to involve you to do more questions per block. And so what we target is about 20 to 30 questions per block and to try to do 50 to 70 questions per day, all under timed condition. I want to take a brief pause and talk about what mastery really means. This is a question that comes up a lot. Now, when I say mastery of something, I don't mean to have PhD level knowledge. When you're mastering things in the early phases, it's okay to have knowledge gaps because you're still going to have chances of going back to those systems when you're mixing topics together in phase four, and then when you're mixing and doing completely mixed blocks in phase five. In terms of how to strategically master something, I recommend using something like first aid. And the way to use it is to find the section in first aid that's relevant to that particular topic. You can find more information in our other YouTube videos, but the punchline is that when you master a topic, you, your goal is to learn all of the things that are showing up in first aid about that topic. And by master, I mean like make flashcards where you understand why these things happen, you understand the pathophysiology behind it, and you've put them into your flashcards if they're things that you didn't know. And so for coronary artery disease, right, this, the corresponding section in first aid would be ischemic heart disease manifestations. I'd want to learn everything about angina, and so all the different kinds of angina. Um, and then, you know, coronary steel, and then sudden cardiac death, and then chronic, like basically anything to do with this particular topic. So probably this entire page of first aid. Note that you should set a limit on the number of subtopics that you try to do per day. I've seen some people, they're like, oh my gosh, I wanna do this for every single question that I get wrong, right? That's a bit too much and that would be too overwhelming. I recommend doing at most maybe two or three subtopics per day, typically around two if you're in dedicated studying. We've got a lot of other resources on the channel about how to master things. So be sure to like and subscribe so that you can see how to learn things in better depth. If you've made it this far, congratulations, because this is where things start to get really fun. At this stage, you're ready for phase You've gotten to the point where you can do 40 question timed mixed blocks and ideally still hit 80% performance. You may not hit that in the beginning, but with work and especially the more that you learn, the faster it will go because you'll have fewer and fewer things that you need to review. If you find that there are still systems that are particularly weak, it's okay to go back to phase three or phase four of those systems specifically. At this stage, I would try to include at least completely timed mixed 40 question block in your studying. Typically what we see at this stage for people, if they are uh, not yet scoring 260s, is that A, they just haven't covered enough of the topics, right? And so they need to just do more of it. Or B, they are missing questions on things that they have knowledge for, meaning they have unforced errors. Typically, up to 50% of the questions that people miss are not necessarily things that they don't know, but they're just unforced errors of things that they maybe misread a sentence, or they didn't understand how this particular sentence fit with another, or they misunderstood what the question was really asking them. The most important thing with all of this is to have a winning mindset. One of my favorite phrases is, I want to play games where if I wait, I win. In other words, I want to play games where my success is an inevitable consequence of the time and effort that I'm putting in, not subject to chance. I think a lot of people that struggle, they'll make arbitrary deadlines. Say like, well, my permit expires in a month, so I have to take it by then if your permit is about to expire. Yes, it sucks if you've got to pay the registration fee again if your permit lapses, but you have to balance that with what are my chances of getting the score that I want? And then every system that you study, you can get it to 80% or 90% and then you can get multiple systems and you can get those to 80% or 90%. If you're making good Anki cards and you're doing those cards and everything you're studying is at that level, then how could you not score 260s on your exam? We had a student who failed step 2 cs years ago and she was devastated. She was a non-USIMG who didn't have any connections and she didn't have research and she didn't have a lot going for her on her resume. What she said was, I am going to do whatever it takes to get a 260. She started at a 202 and in under three months, she had scored a 262 on her NBME. She ended up scoring a 261, but the crazy thing is, after scoring a 262 on her NBME, she still studied for months after that. The reason being, she said, I want to do as many questions as possible. I want to have made as many Anki cards as possible. I want to have mastered everything so that when I walk out of my test, I know that I gave it my all. Having the right framework for how to use UWorld is a critical step. The next step, however, like that student who scored 260s, is to understand the mindset beliefs and habits that you need to make sure that it happens. To learn more, check out How a Billionaire Helped Me Become a Stanford and Harvard trained MD.